So I am honored to have the opportunity to share my short research with everyone. This presentation focuses on the issues of addressing vulnerability. Basically, most of the discussions and studies on vulnerabilities have been dealt with technologically in the view of engineering. However, recently, there are ongoing discussions to deal with vulnerabilities by the viewpoint of policy, not only technological measures. You know that as the internet and cyberspace has been regulating our technology applied to society and its problems are being come up to the surface, then it becomes subject to regulation. Regarding questions, are, isn't the world looking at the issues of vulnerability and trying to regulate it through policy or how much do citizens know about the vulnerability issues and how about the government's ongoing practices such as buying and exploiting vulnerabilities and how such case can be justified? Some point may need to, to be rebalanced. So I think now is the right time to discuss policy to correct the unbalance of vulnerability relations. I have divided my presentation in four parts. First, I will brief some recent issues regarding vulnerability. Then I will look at the meaning of vulnerability, including its definitions and features. Third, I'm going to examine political and social factors of vulnerability and its structure. Lastly, I will present some challenges by the subject of security community. So the presentation will identify the political and social structures regarding security vulnerabilities and future challenges required for those subjects in structures. First, we are going to look at the recent issues of vulnerability. Something is happening around vulnerabilities. OECD has announced a policy report on vulnerability treatment. It includes some guidelines to handling and disclosure of vulnerability. They recommend governments and vendors to implement coordinated vulnerability disclosure policy. And European Commission has strengthened the security of IoT by requiring vendors to implement vulnerability disclosure policy. Also, gray markets are selling zero-day vulnerabilities such as Zerodium. They are paying about $1 million to the vulnerability, which can be used to win the remote control execution also paying about $2.5 million to the Android zero click vulnerability and about $2 million for iPhone. And Korean internet service provider neighbor is implementing bug bounty program and HackerOne or Bug Crowd are the most famous bug bounty platforms. And they support vulnerability mitigations by receive reports from security researchers and deliver them to vendors. United States Department of Defense also implementing vulnerability disclosure policy. And Department of Homeland Security has announced a directive on develop and publish your vulnerability disclosure policy. Here enough, I'm gonna call it VDP. So federal agencies should publish the VDP. In Korea, we have is published case cybersecurity strategy. It contains addressing vulnerability measures such as legalized bug bounty programs and imposing a fine if vendors do not correct the report, reported vulnerabilities. Um, regarding IoT security vulnerability, the best example is Shodan, which is a search engine for IoT device around the world. In Korea, the parliamentary inspection of the Ministry of Science and ICT pointed out that there are many backends and CCTV searched in Shodan without any security measures. In connection with those inspections, there has been a discussion that government need to strengthen IoT security and should address vulnerabilities. Mm, then let's find the meaning of vulnerability in the digital age. Basically, if someone doesn't fix or neglect or abuse defects of technology or systems such as vehicles or other kinds of losses, it is very strange and it is punishable if his or her activity made harm to another person's right. But in the case of a vulnerability today, people buy and sell them, which could affect another people's privacy or property or even his or her physical area. OECD and RFC and United States this defines vulnerability like that. And maybe we could we could find common factors from those definitions. 
that is uh, internal weakness or flow, and it could be exploited by the external factors. And we can say the, the internal weakness or flow could make any harm by itself. So we could say that external manipulation or commands makes technical errors or weaknesses to vulnerabilities. And it must be remembered that when even white hat or security researchers are going to find and fix vulnerabilities, they also need to use and or abuse defects or system or code. Also, we could consider that digital systems are getting more complicated. In 1992, Windows operating system had approximately 3 million lines of code and contained about 60,000 of potential vulnerabilities. And in 2001, Red Hat OS had 30 million lines, which is 10 times increased. And there were about 600,000 of potential vulnerabilities. Today, Windows 10 consists of 50 million lines of code and Google Web Services had about 2 billion lines. And also what is going on around us, the Internet of Things, or even we are saying it as uh, Internet of Everything, it means vulnerabilities can be everywhere. Considering cyber physical system of critical, critical infrastructure or smart home, smart car, etc. And, Vulnerabilities are a key source of digital leaks because it can be used to commit cyber crimes such as privacy infringement or steal and manipulate financial data or trade secret, disrupt operations of business and governments. So by addressing vulnerabilities most effect more effective, we can turn into a successful digital transformation. But the problem is because of very complex technological systems, there are too many vulnerabilities compared to our security partners. Let's move on to the next phase, which is political and social structures regarding vulnerabilities. And before I identify the structure, I would like to draw some short history to addressing vulnerabilities. But I think we, our time is running out. So um, the details of these contents, uh, you can please bear me and I will answer those things. The key contents is basically internet world systems are started from defense concept and in academic society, computer researchers had begun to study the accuracy of program. Such research has led to research on software reliability and research on those stem has connected to flow and vulnerability disclosure model because the reliability of the software could be evaluated only when flows and vulnerabilities of the system could be found and predicted. With those discovering methods of vulnerabilities, researchers on the development of patches and a way to find past distribution time of patches has begun. Starting from this, the vulnerability issue traditionally discussed in the view of engineering has begun to expand to other fields of study, such as economics and business administrations, because organizations should know and measure the economic benefits of information sharing or effectiveness of vulnerability patching and so on. Regarding academic flow is divided into two branches. So the first one is for internal purpose. Which means mitigating decreasing vulnerabilities security by design, software development life cycles, and related standards or certifications. Another one is for external search. External search change, vulnerability disclosure policy, and bug bounty programs. So the, the internal flows or errors of system were turned into vulnerabilities as it connected to the outside and unexpected approaches. In addition, discussions on the addressing vulnerability have expanded from fixing errors and defects to securing and evaluating the reliability of the system. Now, there are discussions on institutionalized the addressing policies of vulnerabilities. So there are two kinds of factors for growing risks of today's technical systems. First is technological factors. Another is political and social factors. The first one 
the technological converters and complex systems are getting complicated and more risky. Digester can be avoided in those non-linear complex and connected technology. This is because the internet is not designed to be secure inherently and packets are moving toward more efficient routes. And physical elements are increasingly attached to such unstable communication systems. So it could be say sources of modern risks are characterized by a significant increase in scope, speed and interdependence. Another factor <coughs> means that the problem of technology is not only risk, but also power. In this viewpoint, the effective regulation of the technological risk is very important because government and markets are necessary to secure political support through technological innovation and industrial and economic growth. Therefore, starting with the risk benefit analysis from economics has begun and various theories on risk management has devised in the various fields of psychology, sociology, or politics and law. So the process of developing technologies and applying them to society is a kind of process of finding balance between expectations and concern of society on those technologies. Also, we should consider that with necessary of expertise and power to control risk, political and social factors are being enlarged. That means technological issues must be analyzed in consideration of the political and social structures. For example, spaceship Challenger you know, had exploded in 1986 because of NASA's unreasonable policy of schedule. And in 2011, Fukushima nuclear disaster had happened because of the corruption of Tokyo Electro Electric Power Holdings and its unethical decision making. So the following page shows the political and social structure of the addressing vulnerability. So first, suppose a security vulnerability has occurred the red box and the vulnerability may be found internally, externally, or not at all. If the government or companies find vulnerabilities internally, those vulnerabilities can be mitigated or eliminated. So this is, is maybe best ways. Therefore, it is the best case if this type can be realized practically, but without all of the possible various approaches and techniques, vulnerabilities cannot be sufficiently found because the method of identifying and weaving weaknesses into vulnerabilities is found through unexpected attacks. And the yellow one, the problem becomes more complicated when security vulnerabilities are discovered externally. When someone found it, they can inform or report to the company or organizations. However, for whatever purpose, someone attempts to exploit the vulnerability will keep it secretly, or someone makes it open to the public for no reason at all. The unknown vulnerabilities can eventually to be used for cyber crimes or intelligence and investigation activities and cyber operations as zero day vulnerabilities. So, uh, let's take a closer look at this structure a little first. When a typical security researcher, which is white hat, finds it vulnerability, they disclose it, not storing it. The types of disclosure include three types, full disclosure to the entire public, responsible disclosure to the organizations, and coordinate disclosure to the white hat organizations. Uh, the full one is a high risk of disclosing vulnerabilities in the form of full disclosure because uh, maybe it is fortunate that vendors develop and distribute patches for the vulnerability first, but this is also a huge burden for the vendors. And if this is not even done, malicious agents develop exploit faster and vulnerabilities could be used to commit crimes. And for a vulnerability, is disclosed according to the type of responsibility disclosure. It is reported only to the vendors concerned as a result. Organizations that have been reported for vulnerabilities can develop and deploy patches for those them to eliminate vulnerabilities. However, sometimes companies do not patch after being reported for vulnerabilities. In fact, some vendors ignore the report or even raise legal issues for or for fair that disclosure of vulnerabilities will undermine their image and disrupt 
their businesses. Because of this, White has often find it difficult to inform or disclose vulnerabilities to vendors. Mm, and so the intermediate coordinators are needed to avoid such problem. This is because it is better to reduce the full disclosure cases than letting them self-regulating. Therefore, thought or third party agencies or businesses are playing a role as coordinators. Uh, White Hat can report vulnerability to those third coordinators and the coordinator delivers them to the vendors in support to mitigate those vulnerabilities. And another type of disclosure is following the vulnerability market types. It is the bug bounty process that corresponds to the white market. Bug bounty is a type of arbitration of contracts when a vendor enters and trusts a bug bounty company to receive and verify vulnerabilities and present to the amount of bounty the bug bounty platform announces and receive reports and they own commissions by brokers, researchers, and vendors. If large companies that have the ability to receive and verify vulnerability reports operate bug bounty themselves, so if patches are developed like this, vulnerabilities can be used to enhance security. Second, the red ones. If black hackers find a vulnerability, they keep it without disclosing. Storing, storing vulnerabilities means developing exploit and attack techniques. Therefore, such vulnerabilities can be exploited for criminal purpose, or it can be sold to markets such as black markets in dark web. If vulnerabilities are sold to those black markets, they are also likely to be used to buy buyers for committing cyber crimes. Sold the yellow ones, it is the case that governments find vulnerabilities such as National Security Agency, NSA, of the US, and US government agencies that have identified vulnerabilities can contribute to security by informing companies to develop patches. But on the other hand, it can be used without disclosure. It can be used for intelligence activities or investigations or even for surveillance to stabilize in some authoritarian states. In addition, vulnerabilities accumulated may be leaked and disclose directly to the public, such as the Italian hacking team, you know, and CIA's Bolt 7 or shadow brokers NSA hacking cases. In those cases, hacking tools and serious surveys created by highly skilled government agencies, such as the case of WannaCry ransomware based on Eternal Blue of NSA will be released without any limitation and it could be leading to the advancement of cybercrime. So now I would like to look at some of the challenges that can be taken to mitigate those vulnerability related issue. Basically security cannot achieve only in specific groups. So uh, role of all members, including governments, vendors, developers, and security companies and citizens is required from the design and manufacturing stage to the endpoint stage. So the government should review of vulnerability disclosure policy like the Department of Defense in the United States and Singapore, UDP can greatly contribute to improving the security of government agencies and it can enhance the security awareness of society and strengthen the abilities of white hat. Also, it is inevitable to exploit vulnerability for proposal of national security and other cyber crime. So it is necessary to make legal standards and process or whether disclose or exploit vulnerabilities. Vendors, especially small and medium enterprises, can feel difficult to receive vulnerability reports, so they are needs to support of governments. For researchers, they are worried about legal charges by copyright or privacy infringement, computer crime, or unauthorized access to state secrets or trade secrets, and so on. And for citizens, they cannot know about their devices are under attack and feeling hard to mediate vulnerability. So we are time, our time is running out. Okay, we are coming to the end of the presentation. In conclusion, I would like to propose some principles on vulnerability policies. So defense first, governments should prioritize defense over offense. They should enhance security by informing and supporting vendors. Also make cooperation among departments and public institutions and with the private sectors. 
make national vulnerability database like United States and Japan or Chinese. And exceptionally, if there are inevitable codes to exploit vulnerabilities for the purpose of emergency national security or dark web investigation, it can be allowed by warrant and parliament should control those exploitations. So we could consider to make the presidential committee on joint vulnerability equities process, which made up of persons with technological and legal expertise. United States, United Kingdom are running those vulnerability equity process. Governments that want to retain vulnerability must demonstrate a critical need that outweighs the security benefit of disclosure to the maintainer and uh, plan to minimize harm, including adequate protections to ensure a secure retention of vulnerabilities by properly protecting them from any unauthorized access during the period prior to disclosure. Next is open and cooperation make vulnerability disclosure policy mandatory to, in the public sector and allow the research by exempting researchers from liability. And it's only five minutes left. So finally, and make it normal, let people know about vulnerability. People have a right to know whether their devices or services are how dangerous and what to do to mitigate those risks. So. So make easy and robust security, big vulnerability or security patch issues should no longer be optional or expert domain. So security should be set simply and vulnerability should be patched with only one operation on the main screen. So the references are as below. There are also more acute legal issues in each of those challenges. So if anyone can share your great thoughts or ideas, I think we could make great contributions for digital safety and prosperity. Thank you for your listening and please feel free to contact me. Thank you. Thank you.